So thanks for coming, guys. My name's Mike. I'm with MCON. Uh, this is Rachel from Forterra, and today we signed a uh, peace agreement, so we'll get along. Um, <laughs> so what our station is, it's on uh, the gaskets, how they're used, how to take care of them, uh, what to look for, that type of stuff. Um, we'll pass them around, take a look at them. I mean, they're, they're not rocket science, but uh, there has been some innovation in the, you know, in the preceding years. Um, and I'll let Rachel jump into kind of looking after them in the care of uh, gaskets. All right, yeah, I'll be talking about proper care of gaskets because it is very important to take care of those gaskets for to ensure the maximum ease of installation for later on and as well as its sealing properties, right? So how do we take care of these gaskets? Like, pretty basic, very simple. These gaskets are required to be stored in a dry sheltered area. Therefore, it must not be exposed on direct sunlight or extreme cold weather. Um, also, it must be clean, free from dirt, mud, or grit. And as well as if it's not an oil resistant ones, it must not come in contact into solvent or petroleum based grease and oils. And again, I've talked about cold temperature on winter installation. Again, it must be stored in a room temperature, keep it dry. And yeah, again, taking care of it is very easy, very basic, but it comes in a long way. It will save everyone the headache for later on because again, it will perform its best if it's stored and taken care of properly, but it doesn't stop there. There's also the inspection of the gaskets prior to installation. Always have it checked, make sure there's no tear, there's no crack or splice separation. Because like, again, if you see any signs of damage or leaking from the gasket, it should not be used at all. And we talked a lot about installation. Mike here will talk more about proper installation of these gaskets. I'll be passing it on to Mike. And later on, I'll be joining you guys as we install ourselves some gaskets over there. Perfect. So yeah, like Rachel said, obviously it's an integral part of water tightness. Um, the rubber manufacturers do make them to tight specifications and they are made based off of our joint details of each manufacturer. So a lot of the ring sets are interchangeable or the same, but there are some differences in different sizes. Um, so I've seen where, you know, job sites have, you know, grabbed rubber gaskets from one to another. Um, chances are they're fine, but there are some, you should have them check or um, double check that just to make sure that the joints match, um, because then it won't be ideal. Um, and like Rachel said, you can typically see on this, this part of the gasket, if there is cracks, tears, stuff like that, um, you, you know, you, you know what old rubber looks like and you can easily see it. We cut a couple of these up just to give you a quick profile. Uh, the lubrication is in that sort of open spot. Um, gone are the days of the sort of rubber profile where they've got the gross glove, a lot of lubricant, put it on and just smear it everywhere and then let it go. Um, this is a lot quicker, easier, and not as much of a mess, and you get a better consistency. Um, I've got a quick demonstration here. It basically just gives you an idea of what, what the gasket's doing when the manhole or pipe is put together. Um, so you've got that, and it sits kind of on the lip. I don't know if everybody can see it, but it sits like that. If this is a manhole um, and you've got it, um, it will just slide over on itself when it comes down. And you'll see that this, this part of it rolls over onto itself and fills that annular space. Um, so you, you can see the, you know, the need to make sure that A, the precast joint is, is uh, within tolerance and that rubber gasket as well. Um, we'll jump over here to the uh, manhole structure. And I don't know if we can get one or two volunteers to kind of, we'll put them on just to say, this is how contractors are doing it. This is best practice. So if you start on one side and kind of get it on that lip, and then they are fairly taut, and make sure it's down. You can see on the lip here that it's right pushed up against it all the way around. So it's supposed to end up on this space here? So it sits here and then it rolls down over, so it won't come all the way down oh, okay. here. And then the other thing to make sure is to equalize the pressure all the way around it so there's no bunching. Um, the manufacturer of the rubber gaskets, I mean, if you tension it with uh, 
like a screwdriver behind it or just a lot of guys will walk around and you'll see them doing that and that's just to make sure you've got an equal tension all the way around it because you don't want that bunched up in one area and cause issues because um, it could lead to a leak. Uh, the other thing to do is uh, make sure that they're all inspecting the, the joints here of, of the precast itself. Um, if for any reason there's some cracking or chipping there, um, it should be noted because it can cause some issues with the rubber gaskets. Again, same thing, temperature is a big, uh, uh, has a significant effect on the butylmastic. Um, I've seen in winter, if that sits out, it's frozen solid, you're not gonna get much, if any, real compression. Uh, you know, I've seen 50,000 liter tanks, just two pieces sit there and the guy's kind of looking at it going, well, I think it's compressing, it might be compressing and ended up having to pull it apart, tiger torch this to warm it up so it actually gets that seal um, that you want. So that's one option there if, if there is some issue with uh, you know, some damage that may have happened. Um, if you see the damage and you think it's more than just a superficial thing, I mean, definitely bring it up um, with the contractor. I know we're, we're always available. Both the companies have uh, significant tech departments um, and we're happy to field calls um, just to, you know, see what we've seen and kind of give you a best practice for what to do with it. Um, this has been around for quite a while. Uh, as you can see, it's nice and shiny. I, I'm, I, I'd wager a guess that neither plant has nice shiny ones, but just a quick no uh, go, no go gauge, just to give, make sure that everything coming out of the plant. So we have these sized for every piece of pipe that we produce, every manhole size we produce, and QC has the, uh, the job of tracking and uh, checking everything that rolls out of the plant. So they're typically pretty busy. Um, and it basically just gives a quick, if I can set it right there, just a quick, uh, that you can see that, that that falls within that range and it should bind right about there. So I mean, it gives them an idea if there's any issues with our ring sets of anything that we can quickly go back they are measured on a fairly consistent basis before we pour, but things happen. So this is a quick way to catch anything so we're not going too far down the road and nothing's going to site that's gonna be out of uh, tolerance. Um, anything else that you can think of on that side? If you wanna just take a quick look at the pipe, we'll, we'll kind of run through it. Um, same type of uh, QC. We uh, do a fair bit and, uh, in our department. Uh, again, with, uh, I think there's a, another station where they, they kind of test compaction of the, you know, the, uh, we put the pipe under load and uh, the three, bear, three edge bearing uh, testing. Um, gaskets, same type of deal, same type of uh, concrete, concrete seals. Um, they are noted on here with the, uh, the size of the gaskets and the pipe does have the same ridge, um, same deal about getting it on, making sure it's straight and true, and then tensioning it to make sure that it's not bunched. Um, and then placing things. Um, one thing we were talking about yesterday with contractors is just asking, making sure that everybody's digging out under every bell, so the bell's not sitting up, taking all the pressure, and obviously causing issues somewhere in the middle of the pipe. Um, we had somebody ask about the dot on, on the pipe. We put that on there as kind of a center line so everybody knows that's kind of roughly where things should be slung um, on the size of pipes that don't have swift bales to pick them up. Somebody was quick to mention that that's not the perfect one. There's an inch or two one way or the other, which the contractor was happy to let me know. So. We'll take that into account, we'll take it back and make sure we're, we're doing as best we can there. But I think within an inch or two is pretty good. Um, any questions on what you're seeing?